When I was 18 years old, I got my first boyfriend. I was a bit of a late bloomer. And um, I was halfway across the country, um, away from home. And I fell in love right away. Uh, he was older and worldly and had an accent and was just fabulous. I, I was completely head over heels in love, infatuated, just, I couldn't even believe it. It was really the first time I was feeling these feelings, and so it was a lot. And I just sort of jumped in and gave my heart right away. <clears throat> and in the beginning, it was great. We had fun, um, it, it was exciting, and he was extremely charismatic and funny and, um, we had so many great times. And I remember having a feeling, which we all have, where things would happen and I would have this, ah, this doesn't really seem quite right type of feeling. And <clears throat> it was over things like him sort of accusing me of looking at other guys or flirting too much and you know I sort of would say oh no no I'm not but then it, it, it progressed mm -hmm. and, and that has led me to go on a long journey of self-discovery and why I would allow it and, and therapy and talking to people that and being around other women that understand what it's like to be a victim of abuse or violence be violated because if you've never been it, if you've never lived it, it's extremely hard to understand what it's like. And that's why people say, why would, why are you staying with this guy? Oh, I would never let a guy talk to me like that or treat me like that. I would never be me. But do you think I ever thought it would be me? No way. Not in a million years. I'm a woman who is a survivor of Emotional, mental, physical abuse, rape, and because of those things that have happened to me, because I was able to somehow have people reach out a hand and say, we're going to help you out of this, and I was able to then say, I'm going to do something to help myself out of this, I've been able to learn that my voice does matter, that I am the most important thing in my universe. So, I guess you start, I would start from childhood. Um, for most of my life, I have been exposed to domestic abuse in my household generally up until I was about 16. Um, it was mental, um, whether it be, you know, my mother threatening me or me being told that I would never amount to anything or I wasn't good enough to the physical. Um, sometimes it was borderline torture. If you can imagine being locked in a room as a child for hours, being beaten until your entire legs turn purple or having to go to the hospital because you got hit so hard that your eardrum bruised. Um, I was estranged from certain parts of my family. Um, we lived, I lived with my mother and father on and off for 16 years. And during the times that I would live with them, I was estranged from the love and care of my other family members. So there were times when my family would call my house impersonating the police just to make sure I was still alive. Or they would call the police and social services from halfway across the country because 
my mother would beat me and force me to call them and tell them how, I, how badly I'd be beaten. Um, and then, you know, besides the physical and mental abuse from my mother came the sexual abuse from my father. Um, he molested me, well, he started molesting me when I was young, probably about six or seven. Um, it continued up until I was about 12 or 13. And I remember I had had enough eventually. And I, I told him I was going to tell my mother, which I did. And, you know, her reaction wasn't what a mother's reaction should have been. So, throughout it all, I can't say that at any point during the domestic abuse or the violence did I think I was going to really lose my life. I really felt like God just had my back the whole time and he was going to make sure that no matter what I went through, I wasn't going to lose my life. But there was a point in time where I couldn't see myself living past 30. And after I left home at 16, the things that I experienced being on my own at a young age, being in the street, I should be dead. Because there was no one. It was just me. And I have to say I've had a lot of angels in my life. Because they weren't if just, you know, one random person who was kind to me changed the entire course of my life. Thankfully at twenty seven I'm not bitter or carrying all this baggage around. I do feel the residual effects of life from time to time, but I can say that I'm healthy and I'm happy and I'm in a good mental place in my life. And no matter what I've been through with family or people in my life, I really don't blame anyone for anything they've done to me. It's just unfortunate that I fell into the hands of people who couldn't love me properly because they didn't know how to love themselves. Hey guys, it's Sylvia Villa and um, obviously, you know, in the past I have everybody shares their stories and I create these programs where I've never really ended up uh, sharing my story and why I created One Way Treatment. As many of you know, I'm adopted and everything started for me when I was a child. So when I was a child, my uh, stepfather was very verbally abusive to me, emotionally abusive to me, in a, in a sense of turning to molesting. And uh, molesting turned into making my mother watch me as he molested me. And then he would make me watch my mother. Well, you know, over and over he raped her. And then this led into, you know, either I'm going to kill your daughter or you have to give her up. So my mother did what she thought was right and she dropped me off in an orphanage and she gave me up and in that orphanage there was more abuse that happened. So as I was adopted, my adoptive parents didn't really know how to deal with me and I was dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder and as my father and my mother were trying to discipline me, I had this instinct of always survival of the fittest so I'm always thinking that anyone who's coming at me uh, was in a sense trying to kill me. and. This was leading to a bad relationship with my adopted parents. This was also leading to bad uh, me even trying to adapt and go to school. I was constantly getting into fights because I didn't know how to really deal in a social setting with authority or with people um, trying to, you know, I guess maybe giving me constructive criticism. This led into obviously my young teenage years into my early adulthood where I constantly, because of my childhood, would find myself in like very bad relationships because I didn't know any better. And um, finally, the breaking point for me was when I was um, in 2007, I started dating somebody. And he, you know, was in corporate America. He was great. He was a project manager. And I would see the signs, the controlling signs, and, oh, um, you can't wear this, and why are you doing that, and the verbal and the mental and abuse. But I had grown such a thick skin through the years of being verbally and mentally abused that his words didn't really matter to me. So he was he saw that. So he was like, let me take it to the next step and decided to um, assault me. 
and he did this with a knife and um, this led me to um, I got a concussion in the back of my head I have about five six inch scars around my elbow and I have about a nine inch scar on my knee and the reason why I have this all on the left side of my body was one of his threats was all you are is a pretty face and when he went to stab my face I just turned in a fetal position to protect myself and this is how I got the scars on me from that point on and going through the whole court process and everything um, that and meeting other girls who've been abused in the court that's when I said you know I have to do something and this led me to 2010 launching my first 10 10 10 life is better dream red carpet event and then I started my nonprofit and then here we are now five years later at our fifth annual 10 10 life is but a dream event and I cannot thank everyone enough for their support and all the women throughout the years who have come forward to tell their stories and just hopefully by just me sharing my story and these other women that we've helped and empowered other women and finally people are paying attention to the epidemic against violence towards young girls and women and I hate to say it but because of football and NFL you know we're finally creating awareness and this happens every single day. Four women a day die from domestic violence. So I just want to thank all of you so much for attending and supporting. And let's just keep educating each other. And let's just say no to domestic violence. Thank you for supporting One Way Treatment. And remember, there's only one way to treat a lady. And that's the right way.